So let's look into fixed point arithmetic. So what does it mean to do fixed point arithmetic? This means that all coefficients are integer. And usually also the input signal is integer and also the output signal is integer. So if we're looking at our FIR filter, yeah, so that's T, T, our delay steps here. So then the input here is integer and then we multiply this here by our coefficients here and that one is then also an integer and so on and then we're just summing this here up and getting the integer out so now the thing is the these coefficients they're usually pretty small so if we are looking at a typical example of our of our coefficients here. Let's have a look here. Um, so if we generating a filter, let's say here B F I R one, let's say one hundred coefficients and we're taking a cutoff frequency of 0 0.1, then we see that these coefficients here are usually very, very small from the design program here. So if we plot that, then we see that these coefficients here are very small. And so what we're getting out of this FIR1 command, for example. So then therefore, what we need to do is we need to scale these coefficients here up. Scale. And this strategy is that we're scaling this up by a certain power of two. Yeah, so we say, so we scale this this here up by two two w or something like that, and that's our scaling factor. So why do we do this as a power of power of two? Because then the output here is obviously 2 to w times too large. And so what the, the solution towards is we just do a bit shift. by W. Yeah, so that's the idea behind that. So what we need to do is now we need to look more carefully how many bits we are generating. So let's start here again with our FIR filter example here. So T and so if we have our coefficients here H of 0 h of 1, h of 2, and so on. So let's say we are getting here a 12-bit input. Yeah, so 12-bit as an example. So the 12-bit, we're getting 12-bit out here. And let's say that our coefficients are scaled up here by, um, what, what do we say, 12, 
bits. So the question, the question is now, do we get an overflow in the accumulator? Yeah, so if we call this here our accumulator A, and this is also, and this is here, let's say runs with integer. Yeah, so for the 12 bit here, this is essentially a short int. And as at the output, we are also expecting a short int. And the scaled up to 10 to 12 big bits is also a short int in terms of C, C types. So the question is now, do we get an overflow in the accumulator? So let's assume that we have a number of tabs, number of tabs is 1000. So let's say, so this A here represents the bits we are getting in our accumulator here. So the maximum bits in the accumulator. Yeah, so here. So how many bits do we get? Obviously our input bits here, so if we call this here i, they are contributing to our bits, so we're getting 12 bits in the system here. So now the weights, if we scale the weights up here, so let's call this here our scale factor w, yeah, so remember that's, that's our scaled up by 12 bits. We get another 12 bits here through the, through the scaling up of our weights. So now the interesting thing is, so if you have numbers of tabs, and we say this is to, this is 1000 number of tabs here, or let's call this M, what we called this before. Yeah, so that's our number of tabs here. So how many bits in addition we are getting through this here? And that's pretty easy to, to work out, because imagine we are summing up two numbers here, then, then the number of bits we needing more is one bit. For example, say two plus two. This gives us four, so therefore that's one bit more. Yeah, so when do we get the next rise in bits? Obviously, if we are going towards eight and then 16, 32, um, 64, and so on. So therefore, this goes with the logarithm of the number of tabs. Yeah, so this is our general formula for um, calculating the bits we require in A. The problem is, this is not the full story, this is just the worst case scenario. So why, why is this the worst case scenario? So the question is, so when when do overflows in A really happen? What we have forgotten here in this um, equation so far is that the accumulator is usually two complement two complement representation yeah so this means if we are creating an overflow this overflow is undone if we are just just going back so the two complement representation 
one could say this is like a represented like a ring yeah, so if we have here a number and um, let's say this is our our number m and then we are adding a number which is which is too big so this is essentially then this number is making a rotation like that and we are ending for example here so that's our resulting number here let's case let's call this k but the thing is if we are subtracting this number again from this here so if we are doing then k minus with our number which is too big then we are ending up again at m so this means so if we are if we are here we are subtracting this again we are rotating just back to this point yeah so this so this row rotates forward and this rotates backwards so okay so for this purpose i've created a small program to show what's happening here so let's go into into the emacs here and go in this program called overflow demo cpp so we need to do this in c because octave won't deal properly with these kind of um, two complement arithmetics and so what i have here is i've got this very simple simple program Let, let's move this a bit together here that we have got them both on the screen so i'm creating a signed character equals a of 100 so that's totally valid because the maximum value is 127 so i print this out and then i'm adding this a plus 77 so that's our number which is too big yeah so let's get this uh, has this yeah so we are adding basically something which is too big because obviously we are getting outside of the 127 maximum value so we're creating an overflow but um, because it's two complements this doesn't matter so as long as i'm now subtracting the same here so i'm subtracting again the number which was too big so the 77 and i'm hopefully getting back to to my 100 after that so let's do that so we need to quickly just command line compile this here like this with a g plus plus this creates us now the program overflow demo and we just start this and so what we see here now is so here this is the first printf command and this generates us here the 100 then we are adding the 77 to it and then the next one is obviously sort of wrong we're getting a minus 79 obviously we were expecting a 177 but because of the overflow this doesn't work but then you now we are subtracting this minus this um, 77 again and so we are getting our 100 100 here back so this means that a temporary overflow doesn't matter in the two complement representation so the take home message for here is that temporary overflow is permitted is permitted so the question is now do we get temporary overflows in the FIR filter which can be fixed so how can we use so how to use the knowledge of temporary overflows to reduce the number of bits in A and obviously this this would be beneficial 
this is then finally beneficial for the precision of our coefficients beneficial for the precision of of the coefficients here because let's have a look here again at our FIR filter just draw this here again and so we have got here that's our accumulator here so that's our A and we've got here our coefficients h of 0, h of 1 and and um, h, h of 2 and our formula for our bits was so far a is i plus w plus log 2 n yeah so a a were the bits in the accumulator input bits and then here we, we had the the uh, scaling of the coefficients and this was the number of tabs So now, now remember how the FAR filter works. That every every time step, this is here summed up. Yeah. So we take the h of zero, multiplies with input signal, sum it up. H of one, sum it up. H of two, sum it up. So we're doing a summation here over all these tabs. So there might be a temporary overflow here ha happening temporary overflow but this temporary overflow might be just undone in the next step for example or later yeah so so this step here might just undo the temporary overflow and so on. So how do we know that this is happening here? For this purpose we just have a look at the impulse response. Yeah, so impulse impulse response yeah, so imagine we have an impulse response which looks like that which most of them look like yeah so we have we have here our our n this is our h of n obviously here in in this area here it will just add up and so the accumulator becomes larger accumulator becomes larger and larger so this might lead to overflows however here in this area here the accumulator becomes smaller again So this means that here these temporary overflows are getting probably removed again. And then we're getting a bit of positive and negative again. So we have here positive, negative, positive. So if we know that the overall gain of this one here, gain, if this is smaller than than one, we can we can hope from this or conclude from this that 
the overflows are temporary. Yeah, so this means when we're looking at our formula again, so A equals I plus W plus log 2N. So these were the number, number of tabs here. This was generated because of the summing up here that in the in the best case this can be omitted. Obviously this needs to be done very very carefully but to give you an idea that the accumulator so in the best case just needs to be basically the precision of the input resolution. This was the input and this was the resolution of the weights.